There was a time in the history of the Muslims, a great time, the time of the Ottoman Empire, a great empire, a great empire that made the world shake. Six or seven hundred years strong, leader, one leader after another. One of the leaders, one of the Khalifs, one of the kings. He had a wife. Now at that time, you can imagine you're ruling the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the world for them. Opened the gold and the money and the lands. Very extravagant, very comfortable, a lot of luxury. One of the Khulafa, his wife, she had a different view. She had a different goal. She was looking in a different direction. Other than this whole luxury that they used to live in. Quite similar to what we live in today. So what she used to do, they had a little son, young boy. She used to take him to the edge of the sea. And she would say to him, see that land over there? So on the other side, you could see a land. There was a city, not controlled by the Muslims. And she would say to her son, see that land over there? What is that? Young boy, maybe seven, eight years old. He said to her, oh mother, that's, that's a great city. A great city. She said, yes, a great city that you will conquer for the sake of Allah one day. She set the path for him. She done it again and again. She used to take him after Fajr many, many times, time after time. And she used to tell him the same thing. A great city that you will conquer for the sake of Allah one day. This young boy whose name was Muhammad is known to us today as Muhammad al-Fatih. And this city is current day Istanbul or Constantinople as they used to know it. Muhammad al-Fatih the word Al-Fatih means the conqueror. Why do we refer to him as Muhammad the conqueror? Because he achieved the goal that his mother set for him. Young boy growing up, he was directed. He was directed on where he was going to go as he was growing up. And then he finds himself in a situation when he was 19. 19 years old, his father passed away. Now this was very unexpected. I mean, young boy, the Khalifa passed away quite young, who was his father, and he took the lead at a very young age. I mean, his mother was probably pre preparing him for something that he was, or she would imagine he would do at 40 or 50 years old. So 19, he took the lead. What do you think he had in mind? When he was ruling the Muslim Ummah, what did he have in mind? Did his mother tell him, you're going to have this many castles and this many wives and slaves, which they could have back then, no problem. They could afford it. It was within the boundaries of halal. When he was 19 years old, what was in his mind? That piece of land that his mother used to show him after Fajr. That piece of land his mother used to show him after Fajr. At 21 years of age, this young 21 year old conquered Constantinople. Now this, this was quite amazing. It was quite amazing because this was not a normal piece of land. This was the head, the head of the Roman Empire for over 1500 years. And it wasn't the head of the Roman Empire for over 1500 years by coincidence. It didn't just so happen that this land ended up being the head. It was organized and planned. There was sea all around it and the way they structured it physically was that so it could not be conquered. It was like the land that can never be conquered, impossible. You can only conquer that land with aeroplanes which they didn't even know of back then. So within two years, Within two years, this man and his army conquered 
the most difficult city that you can conquer. But then there's another point. During these two years, what did he do? Was he leading the Ummah during that two years, sitting at home, doing the normal thing everyone else does? He wasn't. Because within those two years, he built a fortress. See what happened? The Muslims had a fortress on one side of the sea and they needed the fortress on the other side of the sea so that they can block any ships that would potentially come in and help the Romans should he attack them. So from day one, yeah? So he conquered it two years later, but from day one he started working towards it. Straight away. No hesitation. Why would he work towards it from day one? He's living in luxury. He's got everything he wants. It's the goal that his mother set for him. It's the goal that his teacher, his shaykh set for him. They said, this is what you're going to achieve. They put it in front of him and he achieved it. And even those days, by their standards, you know, Constantinople, current day Istanbul, was a very big ticket item at those days. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about it. He said, great is the leader and the army that take Constantinople. So the Prophet, at the days of the Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ set the goal and the companions tried to get it. The companions. Great goal. Six, seven hundred years later, this young boy, he achieves it. But he didn't achieve it by any coincidence. He didn't achieve it just because one day he woke up in the morning and thought, okay, what are we going to do today? Let's go do it. They lay siege to that city for six weeks. Six weeks and it was tough, it was difficult. Even times during those six weeks where his main generals, his main generals, the people he gets advice from the most, would tell him, you know what, too difficult, let's just go. I mean, many Muslim groups before us tried, they didn't succeed, they went. Many Muslim groups, including some of the Sahaba. They tried, they didn't succeed, and they went. So, and, but he wouldn't give up. He wouldn't give up. He achieved an extraordinary goal. He got, a, he got an amazing result. But the amazing result came from two things. The amazing result, brothers, a result, if you want an amazing result, you cannot do a normal action. You can't have a normal goal and achieve an amazing result. You have to have an amazing goal, extraordinary goal, extraordinary actions give you extraordinary result. A normal goal, normal actions will give you a normal result.